Hey guys, so we are Blues Man Vintage again, and today we are with Sean Bellamy, bassist extraordinaire here in Nashville. Um, plays with a little bit of everybody. Um, give us, yeah, give the folks a little bit about who you're playing with and, and uh, what you're doing musically right now. Uh, right now, I'm doing anywhere from four to six nights a week uh, here in downtown Nashville on the Broadway circuit, um, playing for people like Nashville Nobodies. The Rick Trace Band. Good name. Oh, that was a real name? That's thought, a real name. I thought you were just no. called, I, I, you know, I would have called them like the who's who of who cares. But <laughs> That's good. Nash, Nashville. I'm, I'm using that tomorrow night for my band. Um, uh, sometimes I'll play with a band called the Champagne Hangovers. And then, you know, we'll have random nights where we'll just put a band together because the bar needs somebody to play for four hours. Yeah, and you'll meet people in the parking lot and go. Exactly. And yeah, then we call ourselves the Chippendale Rejects and we go on stage. <laughs> that's a good name, too. So, um, so, you, so you guys are doing mostly kind of cover stuff down there with yeah. that? Yeah. Um, you know, each band kind of has at least one guy that's writing some stuff, and usually everybody's floating those songs around, like, hey, if you're playing with me, try and learn these one or two songs. And, right. Uh, have these ready. We may or may not play them, but... Cool. Um, so, what kind of gear, what are you using? Because when you're downtown, you know, a lot of people don't, that aren't from Nashville don't realize getting to the gig downtown that's a challenge yeah um usually well this is this bass never leaves my side uh it's my bluesman uh 62 to bill but um yeah this is always with me on a gig if i need two bases i have a fender jazz bass that i take out with me as well it's a lot heavier than this um but then most nights i try and just take uh one bass and my pedal board which uh, so what's on your pedal board? Uh, I've got my Sure Wireless on there, mm -hmm. uh, a Bass Bone V2, a uh, chorus pedal that's actually made for guitar but sounds amazing on bass. Uh, I think it's by a company called Moen. And then uh, I've got the bass, oh, what's it called? Uh, the bass Soul Food. And uh, then a compressor and straight out to the amp. Cool. So. Yeah, so, yeah, and, and when you're doing those Broadway gigs, you don't take your own amp, you just play whatever Right, it, you yeah, know, which it can be a blessing or a curse. You know, sometimes you'll have a GK full stack, other times you'll have a little Ampeg, you know. You know, those B15. Yeah. The, B115. Yeah, if, if, you're, if you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and if you're lucky, the guy before you didn't blow the speaker in. Exactly. Um, that's why, you know, in, in Nashville, and a lot of these gigs, the bass players tend to keep all of their tones either in their bass, on their board, because they don't know what they're plugging into from night to night. Um, so that, that, that can pose its, its whole new set of challenges of trying to hear yourself and, and all those good things. Um, all right, well, tell us um, a little bit about what got you into music. What got you started playing the bass? Um, well, I originally started off playing sports uh, when I was really young and played football, basketball, baseball, mm -hmm. soccer, everything. Uh, but then, like, I hit middle school, like, fifth grade, and um, somebody suggested, hey, why don't you try out for band? And I did, and started out on trumpet, and it just took off from there. So. Nerdville from there. Exactly. The same, same way with me. I, yeah. quit, I quit baseball when I realized I was terrible at it, but same. I could play the drums. <laughs> so. Um, but, yeah, then um, seventh grade rolled around, and they needed a bass player for the jazz band, so I started doing that, and... Uh, then I guess that was, God, almost 15, 16 years ago. So is that, yeah, okay, so that's what, 12, 13 years yes, old? Yes, uh, like about 11. About 11 years old. Yeah, 11 or so, and I just turned 28, so, um, yeah, 17 years, I guess, this coming Christmas. So now, so more than half your life you've been playing the bass. Yeah, I've played, you know, a lot of other things around it. I've played trumpet, trombone, tuba, baritone, drums for a while. But it all came back to bass, and eventually, uh, even studied it for a little bit in college, and now I'm doing this. Cool. Yeah. So doing the Broadway gigs, doing, you do, you, you've done some some artist gigs. Yeah. In the past um, too, so some I've, gigs. Yeah, I've done some uh, regional touring stuff. Um, I played for an artist called Goldilocks. Um, I was in a band called the Matt Gray Band. We did uh, the Tin Roof Circuit for a while. Uh, Andrew Velez Band. I'm still playing on and off with him whenever uh, he's in town. He lives in Atlanta now. Um, but yeah, I do that. And then I just picked up a bluegrass gig with an artist named Christy Cox. There uh, you go. From, from Australia. And she's living here in Nashville. Australian Nashville. bluegrass. 
I'm not sure how I feel about that. It, but. It's honestly, it's some of the best music I've ever played. Really? It's weird playing upright again, but oh, okay. it's um, it's it's a challenge. I, I kind of okay. approach it as more of a jazz side than you know just one four five like most bass right. players would. Right. So. Well, there you go. So you, versatility is apparently very key in this town for 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 longevity in this business. You've got to be able to adapt to whatever the situation is, and you can, yep. you know, one set you're playing a country gig, the next set it's a rock gig, the next set it's a bluegrass gig. Mm -hmm. You know, and you might do all of those on a Thursday down on Broadway because you've got to be able to go from one gig to the next. Sometimes they'll do doubles and triples, you know, three four hour sets a day. Um, you know, those those can be challenging challenging days for you guys. So. Yes, they they can. That's when you Especially learn to utilize the back of your car as a nap spot. Yeah, yeah. So cool. And we don't want to talk about bathroom breaks. So I just <laughs> <laughs> what bathroom breaks? Right. What's that? All right. All right. So now let's do some of the fun stuff. We're going to do these rapid fire questions. Okay. And you just answer with the first thing that pops in your head. Uh, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Van Halen or Van Hagar? Ooh, uh, Van Hagar. I know the answer to this one already because I know you Star Trek or Star Wars. Star Wars, come on, man. Yeah, I know. Picard's my favorite, too. Um, <sighs> <laughs> if you're eating ramen, is it noodles or soup? Ooh. Noodles. Yes, you drain that nasty stuff. I can't say that enough times. Um, <laughs> if you're on Mars, what do you do for fun? I don't know. Uh, write a Red Dirt Country song? I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Beam or Jack Daniels? Ooh, Jack, I'm a Tennessee boy. There you go. Cake or pie? Cobbler. Not the Ooh, above. Tennessee guy comes out with cobbler. <laughs> um, yeah, but well, what kind of cobbler? Oh man, peach. Pe yeah, okay. I'm with you. I, I can do an apple or a cherry, but peach is where it's at. True Southern boy. All right, guys. Tell them where they can find you and more about Sean Bellamy. Uh, I'm on Instagram and Facebook as uh, Sean Bellamy Music, all one word. Um, and then if you're trying to find me in person, chances are I'm downtown on Broadway. So just start poking your head in and out of bars. I'll be there. <laughs> all right. Well, you can find more about us at bluesmanvintage.com. Check out our YouTube channel as well. Be sure you like, share, and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time.